What is up everyone and welcome to some more F1 23 My Team Career Mode and we're here for round Cash number 16 of season 6 of our Jaguar racing career and it is time for my favourite race on the calendar, you know, already know what it is, it's the Japanese Grand Prix. Everybody knows how much I love this circuit and if you don't it's time to get with the program quite frankly because where have you been? Uh, you know, I have had so much success around this circuit, it's uh, almost beyond belief. I would say every single year it feels like I rock up to the circuit and I'm like this has got to be the year this has got to be the year that finally someone has an answer for my supreme pace around this circuit but uh, it's not happened so far in five years of coming here we've uh, we've shown so much speed so much pace around here and given that we're currently leading the championship by 65 points this is going to be a real opportunity to put us out of sight going into a, you know a part of the calendar that i do tend to struggle in a little bit races like qatar mexico um even kota to a to a degree as well in las vegas and Abu Dhabi are not brilliant for me either so there is a realistic possibility that uh, we could struggle a little bit in the back end of the season so getting a good result here is still very important even if we are leading the championship by quite a lot it is looking ever more likely like I might wrap up the championship with quite a few races to go but you never know I could be struck down with some serious unreliability and uh, you know my closest rivals could slowly build their way back into the championship not only that but with Charles Leclerc not having the greatest run of form recently we've had to work overtime in the constructors fight as well to make sure that we can try and wrap up the double this season for the first time in our team's history and um, yeah we uh, we've got quite a lot to uh, to focus on here we've got two championships still hanging in the balance at the moment and well while things are looking good for us anything could change at any moment however practice was an indication that things might go well for us because we had pretty good pace on the mediums and i'm hoping that this will translate to some good pace in both qualifying and the race um yes i may have been a few tenths off of sergeant and lawson who did do times on the mediums but they went out much later in the session uh when the track obviously had a bit of time to evolve and maybe they were running different fuel loads and you know there's so so much stuff that um could have could have controlled their pace and that kind of thing but we will see what kind of result we can get in quali here realistically uh, only pole is acceptable here if i do anything worse than pole position i have made a catastrophic error because this is one of my strongest circuits on the calendar and i've looked so good around here in years gone by we've had multiple poles converted those into multiple wins without any real uh without any real issues whatsoever so we make our way onto our first blind lap on a fresh set of soft compound tires it's a 125.4 and it is the fastest lap of the session for the time being but we will see whether uh, whether anyone can use surplus as the uh, the session goes on and as we make our way onto our second flying lap on another fresh set of soft compound tires you can see we're actually all the way down in p4 we did lose a little bit of time through the final chicane but we managed to gain it back on the exit we had a better exit than before so it's a 125-0 this time and that is good enough for p1 in q1 we're comfortably through to q2 and hopefully we can have more of the same in the ensuing sessions as well. Uh, I was a little bit concerned here when I saw that Charles Leclerc was not in the top 14, even though uh, I went fastest. And indeed, it's awful news. Uh, he's one hundredth of a second off the cutoff there. Dennis Hauger going one hundredth of a second faster than him. That's uh, bad enough for Leclerc to get 18th there. So he joins Vesti, Duan, Sonoda, Stroll and De Vries in the drop zone. And um, I mean, that is just not good enough from Charles Leclerc you know on a weekend that where really if he wanted any chance of winning this world championship he needed to be right up there with me you know displaying the same sort of pace that I was probably even more superior pace and you know it's not like he doesn't have the skills to he's a hundred rated for goodness sake in one of the fastest cars on the grid there's no excuse for it from Charles Leclerc so uh, yeah really disappointed from him hopefully he'll be able to make his way through the field to at least get back into the points at minimum but it's going to be a real task for the monogast driver on a used set of soft compound tires we did a 126.0 that would have actually put us p11 had we stayed on that set of tires but you can see that the, the uh, improvement that we're achieving here is almost one second we're going to be ever so slightly slower than before it's a 125.1 rather than 125.0 this time but still pretty good on that fresh set of soft compound tires it sees us through to the next session in p2 and um yeah i still think that we have a very good chance of getting pole sergio Perez doing a 124.9 there two tenths faster than us that's actually a pretty good result for him 
Speaking of uh, pretty good results, I'd say that uh, you know the likes of Porsche and Fittipaldi will be pretty happy to get through at the expense of both Aston Martins of Sargent and Hauger, then Lawson, Joe, Albon and Gasly all knocked out there. Disappointment for Albon, who I believe he won a race quite recently. Was it Monza? I think he got the victory at. So um, yeah, to find himself knocked out in Q2, uh, a little bit disappointing, but uh, I'm sure that he will uh, he will bounce back in the race, maybe try and get into the points if he can. That's the problem, is that there's, there's 20, I would say 20 drivers on the grid at the moment who have a reasonable chance of getting points because I'd say that the uh, the Alpha Tauris are still a ways off. So uh, you have to be really on it in the weekend to uh, score points, the AI. Um, on our used set of tyres on our banker lap, we did a 125.5, but uh, it won't surprise you to learn too much that we are going to be improving on that on a fresh set of soft compound tyres already as we make our way through 130R. We are improving by quite a significant margin and as we make our way through the next few corners uh, we're only going to be improving further from there it's a uh, six tenth improvement so we should be into the 124s yep to 124.9 and that is good enough for pole position so uh, yeah very very happy with that and hopefully we'll be able to convert this one into a victory in the Grand Prix tomorrow with qualifying finished it's time to remind ourselves of our top three Robinson, Fittipaldi and Lando Norris with qualifying wrapped up we now have our grid line up for the big race tomorrow be sure to join us then for what will no doubt be a fantastic race. Well, it's pole for us, but look at that. Enzo Fittipaldi, take a bow. P2 in qualifying there. What an absolutely remarkable result for the Brazilian driver. You know, and uh, one of my former teammates, of course, is Fittipaldi. So we'll see what he can do and we'll see what we can do as we get into the Japanese Grand Prix. Welcome along then to the magnificent Suzuka International Circuit, a stone's throw away from Issei Bay in the beautiful Japanese countryside. What surprises lie in wait for us today in the Japanese Grand Prix? Let's run you through the driver grid order for today's exciting race. Robinson lines up on pole position and Enzo Fittipaldi completes the front row. As we continue through the rest of the grid today, we have Oscar Piastri, Verstappen, Magnussen, Teo Porcher, Ocon, Perez, Sargent, Hauger, Liam Lawson, Norris, Joe, Albon, Gasly, Vesti, Leclerc, Dewan, Russell, Sonoda, Stroll, and Nick de Vries rounds off the grid. Now, it's almost time for lights out, so let's go down to the track. And Anthony Davidson joins us for this one. And great to have your company. There's no weather to worry about here. What will be going through the drivers' minds as they finish these last-minute preparations? Well, I imagine they'll be starting to feel the adrenaline as they anticipate the rundown into Turn 1, a bit like preparing to go into battle. The unknown situation will bring nerves, but that's a good thing. It will keep them focused on the moment and on their surroundings as we build towards the start of the Grand Prix. OK, this is our engine supplier's home Grand Prix, which means there's a lot of very important people here behind the scenes. I'd love to give them a strong result to watch today. Plus, a good result might make my post-race meetings a little bit easier. Well, supposedly this is our engine supplier's home race. I was pretty sure that Red Bull were an Austrian company, but uh, anyway, I know obviously they used to have okay, those so Honda ties, so maybe that's what, cycles, uh, so what that means. And, and um, yeah, we're going to be going on a pretty, uh, pretty different strategy to the one that most people are going to be on. Uh, the game said you should do hard medium, and I thought to myself, well, I think we've got good enough pace here to contend with the medium compound runners Super when I'm on the hard compound tyres. Sure so I'm going to take a bit of a gamble here, which hopefully should give me a quiet life the in the, the second half of the race when I'm on the mediums and everyone else is on the hards. But the uh, we will see whether that materialises in the end or not as we get ready for the, uh, the grid to form up now, and now we can get ready for the lights to come on. And the lights go out, and we've had an all right getaway there, but actually it seems like Fittipaldi has mostly stayed with us. And through the second phase, he's actually a little bit faster. Going up the inside, Enzo Fittipaldi is going to take the lead of the Japanese Grand Prix. And this is not what I was expecting to happen whatsoever. I took a gamble on these hard compound tyres, and it doesn't seem to have paid off. I was almost certain I was going to hold on to the lead of the race. 
yes, in uh, historically, I uh, perhaps haven't always had the, uh, the the best of starts when I'm starting on a slightly weaker tire compound for the cars around, but usually that just means I don't gain any positions. Not that I lose positions, we're actually coming under pressure from Piastri now as well. And, um, well, this is, uh, this is absolutely not what I was hoping for at all. Enzo for the power, these seven tenths up the road. We're going to have to start burning that battery nice and quickly, or he might break out of that DRS range, and then we are really going to be in trouble here if we don't uh, if we don't get a move on. I did not think that we were going to lose the lead at all during this race. Never mind on the opening lap. Um, but yeah, Enzo Fittipaldi, he has, uh, he has got past us and he's made his way into the lead of maybe the, maybe the first Formula 1 Grand Prix that he's led. I know he's not had a victory in Formula 1, but um, I'm not sure if he's, uh, if he's led a race or not. In any case, if he can convert this, if he can show more superior pace to me over the course of the race distance, then Enzo Fittipaldi could well be on for uh, his first victory in Formula 1 if he can stay ahead of us. However, we've managed to uh, neutralize the gap a little bit here, you know, down to three tenths again. I don't know if we're quite going to have the pace to get ahead of him here, but I think we're still looking pretty good uh, irrespective of that, so it shouldn't be too much of an issue. And uh, yeah, we are uh, we're staying with the Brazilian driver for now. As we make our way towards the end of lap three, the DRS is now available and uh, okay, you can so see that we are closing eight, down Enzo Fittipaldi nice and quickly on the run down into turn one. He breaks really early and we send it up the inside of him and we're going to reclaim the lead of the Japanese Grand Prix. And well, after that, things were pretty comfortable. I, uh, I pulled away from Fittipaldi okay, by yeah. over one second nice and quickly. Uh, it wasn't really too much of an issue whatsoever. And uh, we just continued to pull away from him after that. You can see here on lap seven, uh, just watch the delta to fit the Pauli over the course of the lap. You can see now it's up to two seconds. And through this first sector in particular, this is where my car is really shining. I've set myself up with a, uh, a fairly high downforce setup. I think it's 38, 34 wings or something like that here today. So uh, yeah, you can see I've gapped fit the Pauli by about a second on this lap. And uh, I think these hard compound tires are really starting to come in and the medium is maybe starting to fall away from them. Obviously the tires wear out a little bit faster when you've got uh, a high fuel load in the car and as the fuel burn uh, continues the tire wear kind of uh, you know reduces a little bit as well. So as we make our way onto lap number 10 and uh, towards the beginning of lap 11 we are now leading Piastri, he's overtaken Fittipaldi and Piastri again, he is a little bit faster pace wise than Fittipaldi I would say but he still is not really showing the kind of pace that you would need to uh, to catch me in this race. At least Piastri is sort of sticking with me on pace. The delta to him not increasing by anywhere near as much as it was to uh, Fittipaldi. Only a few tenths over the course of this lap so far as opposed to you know nearly a full second which uh, it was in the case of Fittipaldi. And as we make our way through the final corner, you can see the gap is basically the same. It's only maybe increased by about a tenth or two. Was it my best lap? No, not by any stretch of the imagination. But regardless, I think we are looking so, so strong here that uh, we shouldn't have to worry too much. There is an indication that there's going to be some rain coming at some point. So uh, I accidentally uh, extended my stint by one lap from what I was really supposed to. And the reason I did that is because I thought that the rain might come sort of sooner than uh, than like the the hard tires would have been completely worn out but um, no it's supposed to be coming right at the end of the race so I just decided to box onto the mediums there's no point going for some sort of alternative tire strategy which could throw away the win when it's almost nailed on for me anyway so yeah boxed at the end of lap 14 I don't think the one lap uh, undercut from Piastri is going to pay out today and indeed you can see the gap is basically the same as it was before and by lap 17 moving on to the start of lap 18 I've basically just I, I've extended the gap to beyond where it was uh, before on lap 11 when I uh, showed you last time. Meanwhile Fittipaldi has sort of capitulated in this race a little bit he just couldn't uh, couldn't keep the pace with the cars around him and it's actually his teammate Liam Lawson who's found his way into a pretty good spot here. However, I'm keeping my eye on Dennis Hauger there, on those medium compound tyres. If he can keep those going for the remainder of the uh, the race, then actually we could be looking for uh, for maybe another Hauger podium, which would be pretty impressive given that Hauger, I think he started 9th or 10th or something like that after the, uh, the penalties for Russell and Norris uh, dropped them out of the top 10. Um, meanwhile, I'm looking and I think Leclerc has actually got himself into the points there. I think he's in about P7 or P8 by the looks of things. So he's actually had a pretty decent recovery here, our team, mate. And um, yeah, when I uh, showed you that clip on lap 18, they said that the rain 
was uh, you know inbound in a few laps time and it turns out that a few laps time was about five laps because lap 22 uh, we're finally starting to see a little bit of rainfall. You might not be able to see it just yet. You might have seen it ever so slightly earlier, but over the course of this lap, you will no doubt see that there is going to be a few drops of rain cropping up here and there. And uh, yeah, it is, uh, it is definitely uh, time for the, uh, the rain to come down, which presents us with actually a bit of an interesting conundrum of whether we're going to have to box for intermediate tyres or not. I think the AI are likely to stay out, but um, whether it ends up affecting our performance so much that the AI starts catching us because they usually are a little bit stronger when the uh, when like I'm on the wrong tires if they're on the wrong tires it doesn't affect them quite as much however you can see as we make our way now onto lap number 25 uh, the rain still hasn't really affected the track to the point that it's time to switch onto another set of tires yet the uh, the medium still working quite well maybe they're just a tad slower uh, around the circuit but they're not getting to the point where they're so cold that they're losing all of their grip or anything and actually I'm still pulling away from Oscar Piastri on those hard compound tyres. Dennis Halger making his way up into P4 there you can see but I don't think he's going to catch his former teammate uh, Max Verstappen or his other former teammate myself for that matter um, and uh, yeah it probably will not be a, a podium for the Norwegian driver today but uh, we've gapped Piastri by one second there so clearly his hard struggling in this uh, in this weather a bit more than my mediums I don't know if that's due to the fact that it's um, you know the the tires have sort of a lower operating rate actually that wouldn't make any sense if anything it would be the opposite way around so yeah I really don't know why that's happened um, but it has so that's all uh, that's all we can focus on and we make our way onto the final lap of the race now and I think we know what's going to happen at this point but um, yeah I uh, I really after I got back ahead of Fittipaldi into lap four there was no coming at me today. I was just completely uh, superior to everyone else on the track in terms of my pace. And um, I mean, yeah, there's a reason I love this track. It's because it makes me look like prime Max Verstappen, prime Michael Schumacher, prime whoever your favorite driver is. That's, that's how I look when I drive at Suzuka. Nobody can even get close to me. I, I genuinely think in the, in the times that we've raced here in the last three, four, five seasons, I've had maybe two attacks from drivers and obviously Fittipaldi overtook me at the start of the uh, the race today but we're going to round the final corner start celebrating early because we have won the Japanese Grand Prix for something like the oh, fourth time in a row at this point just and uh, just increased our race. successful well done, winning run around this circuit Alex Albon somehow gets driver of the day it should have been us I've been robbed but I don't care because it's another 26 points that's it then for another fantastic Grand Prix here in Japan. A brilliant victory that has thoroughly earned the applause of the sellout crowd here today. Anthony Davidson, a resounding victory today. What set them apart from the rest? I feel like consistency was probably the key today. There's being quick, and then there's being quick lap after lap after lap. If you can do that, you can capitalize on other people's errors without making many of your own. And that's an approach that can push you a long way up the field. A show-stopping performance from the three drivers approaching the podium right now. It's been an interesting Grand Prix, that's for sure. Well, it was a very, very strong race for us, as I half expected. But, uh, I mean, it's been a good race from these guys on the podium with me as well, Piastri and Verstappen. Piastri, another P2 for him, another podium in a really quite strong season for him where when his car's been, you know, working for him and uh, he's been showing good pace, he's really looked like one of the best drivers on the grid at the moment. So, yeah, Oscar Piastri, potentially a uh, championship contender for next season, but I don't think he'll quite get in the mix for this one. And uh, another great victory for myself. So let's have a look then at the driver's standings. Robinson increases their championship lead. So let's discuss, and who would you say is a contender for your driver of the day? I have to give it to Robinson. It's time to see how things are shaping up in the Constructors' Championship. The owner-driver's team moved to the top of the table. Well, that certainly was an exciting weekend of Formula One. Be sure to join us for more exciting Formula One action very soon. Well, I have to say, it's perhaps a little bit disappointing that uh, there just didn't seem to be 
that much uh, competition in the Constructors' Championship after all. At the start of the season, it was really looking like it was going to be a great fight between myself and uh, and Leclerc and Russell and Perez in the Red Bulls as well. You know, I think in the first four races, all four of us had won a race or something like that, if I remember correctly. Um, and so it was looking like it was going to be really good. But then since then, none of those three drivers have won another race. Norris has won... I think maybe one or two more races since that point. Hauger has won a couple of races. Verstappen, Albon, they've won a race as well. But for the most part, it's just been it's just been me. It's been all me, um, which I really was not expecting. I thought that we would uh, we would have things a little bit tougher than this. And surprisingly, the prime candidate I would say now to get P2 in the drivers' standings is not Charles Leclerc. With the form that he's been showing, uh, you know, at the start of the season he was absolutely on fire. I was thinking to myself, this guy is going to push me all the way and it just hasn't happened just hasn't happened for Charles Leclerc just doesn't seem to quite possess that pace to be able to uh, to be able to push us to the drivers championship instead it's actually looking like it's going to be Oscar Piastri despite the fact that in 16 races this season the Australian driver has not won a single one he's obviously had enough podiums to the point that he is now becoming a legitimate you know p2 contender in this driver's championship fight do i think he'll catch up to me no because they're now like 80 points behind me or something ridiculous like that so i think it's going to be it's going to be very difficult for anyone to really get involved in that in that championship fight now but charles leclerc the only reason that he's still in p2 in the driver's championship is because of that win all the way back in round two in australia you know oscar piastri if he'd if he'd had one win this season he would be uh, in P2 in the Drivers' Championship instead of uh, instead of Charles Leclerc. So, yeah, if he can get that victory, I see no reason why Piastri wouldn't uh, end up in that position. So, um, yeah, I'm just, I'm just very, very impressed by Oscar Piastri. I think him uh, and Hauger have probably been, apart from the, you know, the sort of uh, championship favourites, I suppose, they've been sort of the, uh, the drivers who I didn't really anticipate were going to be in a championship fight that have ended up being but maybe i wrote off piastri too quickly because he actually did end up finishing like third or fourth in last year's drivers championship fight if i'm not mistaken and did pick up quite a few victories on that road as well so um yeah maybe i'm being maybe i'm being too unfair to piastri to say that i didn't expect to be in a championship fight but hauger is also another driver who's really impressed me um yeah let me know in the comments if there's any driver this season that you've been particularly impressed with apart from myself obviously who i think i've racked up about seven wins this season at this point um um, yeah, obviously, apart from myself, I think Leclerc has got to be one of the more disappointing ones, even though he's P2 in the uh, in the Drivers Championship. But anyway, that's going to be it for this video. If you enjoyed, please make sure you like and subscribe, and hopefully, I will see you in the next one.